Hi everybody, this is Brian David Marshall coming to you from the Tournament Center at the Magic the Gathering World Championships in San Francisco. I'm here with Grand Prix Brisbane winner Jeremy Neiman and we're talking about his Blue Way Touch Black control deck that just went 5-1 in day one of the event in standard. So nice job on day one here, Jeremy. Thanks, Brian. Uh, tell, tell us about uh, what you were thinking about as you were working on standard for this uh, event. Um, well, I didn't, strictly speaking, build this deck. This was built by my friend and collaborator, Daniel Onwin. So D Daniel Onwin's um, actually the gentleman who built Green White Tokens. As well. That, that eventually won in the hands of Martin Duza in Hiroshima. He also Hiroshima. built the Blue Black Control deck that I won in Brisbane. Yeah. Pretty, pretty nice uh, job out there, uh, Daniel, if you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> You should show yep. up to one of these, we could do a deck tech with you. <laughs> <laughs> you got a deck tech in Australian Nationals. Okay. So, so what, what, was the, what, was the, what was the thinking on, on, the, on the deck? Uh, well, the idea was, it's, it's similar to my blue-black control deck that I won Brisbane with, but the problem is that the format has changed since Brisbane such that it's not a good choice anymore. Right. You, you can't go into a standard format and just play the same deck week not in, week out, especially at the highest levels. Not at all, because the metagame, people see the deck, they adapt for it, they play decks that beat it, um, it just like even a couple weeks after the tournament it wasn't a good choice anymore. So uh, I, I, now I watched you playing a couple times today and honestly when I made my notes early on in the day I was like uh, Jeremy Neiman, Solar Flare. Right. It's because I saw you playing this card right here, Elish Norn, Grand Cenobite. And I, this is a card normally, you know, if, you're, normally, if you see Forbidden Alchemy and Elish Norn, we're thinking that You're this thinking is, that you're putting Elish Norn in your graveyard and throwing it with Umbaria rights. I mean, who pays seven mana for that, right? Right. Yeah. But you're, you're actually just hard casting this I'm, card. I'm paying seven mana for it. It's, it's worth seven mana. In this format, there's a lot of uh, creatures with, with two or less toughness. There's a lot of decks that it just completely shuts out. So I played two Tempered Steel decks and one Green White Tokens deck and also a Blue White Humans deck. All of those decks, you resolve Elish Norn, everything dies. Their spirits die, their Mirror Crusaders die. Um, everything goes away. Moreland Hunt doesn't do anything. It's it, against Tempered Steel, they can't even dispatch it because they don't have any artifacts in play. They're all dead. <laughs> all right, so let, let, let's walk through the deck. Let's start up here. Uh, White Sun Zenith? Yeah, so White Sun Zenith is an anti control card. Um, it's, it's an instant that kills them. So usually what happens when control decks control mirrors in this format, you both just sit there going, think twice, spin an alchemy, think twice, spin an alchemy. No one taps any mana for anything. The last thing you want to do is be trying to tap out for a Sphinx. It's never going to resolve. Um, so what Sun Zenith gives you a way to get around that. Late in the game, you can, if they've tapped low, you can tap a bunch of mana, make a bunch of cats, and then you can protect them with mana leaks. And you can protect your cats with your counter spells. And you actually have a clock. Right, so spoiler, spoiler alert, there's no consecrated Sphinx in this deck. There is Consecrated Sphinx. Two oh, Sphinx. Yeah. see, now you're telling me, yeah. <laughs> telling me one thing, but so this is another okay, one. So, so, this you, is, so your three your three kill cards are White Sun Zenith, Elish Norn, and, and Consecrated Sphinx. And, and those, are the, those are the win conditions, that's right. So these usually come out in the aggro matchups, but they're just so, so important in the control decks. And you do want to win game one in the control mirrors sure. because it can't go for a while. So, yeah. Doomblade, now this is something that blue-white control decks usually can't do. This is right, that's right. Now the problem with blue-white as opposed to blue-black, now obviously blue-white, um, I think it's a it, it's better placed than blue-black because of Day of Judgment, but it doesn't get to play this card, and that's why we wanted to kind of splash black as well, obviously also for Forbidden Alchemy. But Doomblade, it, it's, it's so efficient, I mean it's too mad to kill anything, it makes your Snapcasters much, much, much better. Snapcasters okay. is pretty bad if it just, it can only target Mana Link. Um, and it's cheap removal, it's, it kills basically anything. There's um, not that many black creatures being played in the format, so um, yeah. So if it wasn't for something like Forbidden Alchemy, could you play this with like Brimstone Volley or? Well, Brimstone Volley is a lot worse than Doomblade. <laughs> <laughs> Doomblade, I think, is, is just the best removal spell at the moment. Okay. Okay. Then you also have you have like six spot removal cards in the deck. That's right. You also and have two Oblivion Rings, which is kind of catch all. They're not amazing against anything, but they just do a lot of stuff. They kill Planeswalkers, they take out an Inconvenient Hero of Blade Hold if you haven't drawn Doomblade, they take kill a Tempered Steel or a Shrine of Burning Rage, it's crept up to a lot of canners. They're a little bit clunky, but they're very versatile. Day of Judgment. This has been in one name or another in every blue-white control deck right. since the beginning of time, right? right. Obviously, Day, obviously Wrath of God or Day of Judgment is now called. Uh, very, very important for control decks. I mean. Um, it's particularly important now that everyone's playing Mirror Crusader and Dungrove Elder and people are not as vulnerable anymore to creature removal, to just going one for one, you one for one, you one for one, you Sphinx. So you, need, you, you do need the sweeper to be able to keep up with the fast aggro decks and the resilient aggro decks. 
giving Jura uh, sort of fills a similar role to this. Sort right? of like Day of Judgment. It's sort of like the fourth Day of Judgment, except it actually you'd rather draw a day in a Gideon than two days, I guess. Right. So. And this can uh, this can also serve as a. In, yeah, in, 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 in corner cases, this can kill your opponent. Oh, absolutely. You know, it's done that several times today. Um, it swings pretty hard. Obviously, it's amazing against creatures. It usually takes out a lot of an attacking force all by itself. And if it's not molested for a few turns against an aggro deck, you're, you're going to win that game. And then you have uh, seven counter spells, three That's dissipate. Right. Some, some, some poor operations here, Jeremy Neiman. What's going on? I've you're got the mirages about, yeah. You're taking the yeah, time to line up all your basic lands, so you're oh, playing no. the same basic land art. Well, what's going on there? Oh, look, I only had three dissipates. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't find the third Dendigo one. Uh, so seven, seven counter spells. Um, the, the fourth dissipate was in the deck for a while. Uh, but seven counter spells, a little bit of, little bit of overkill. Dissipates come out a lot. They're not very good against the aggro decks. Three mana for a counter spell is a little bit more mana than you want to pay. Sure. But they're just super important against ramp. They're really important against control. You need to have counter magic so that you know people don't just drop primeval titans on you. One of the things that's interesting to me about the control decks right now is you can really hide your intentions. You know, they don't know if you're leaving two mana right. up because you have mana leak or because you're casting Think twice. Or Doomblade as well, yeah. Or Doomblade, yeah. So you, yeah. you have all these different things you could be doing and, they're, and then you that's really right. put the pressure on them to make a decision. That's right. And a lot of the time they just have to run their things into your open mana because they can't afford to just say go and for you to go Think twice, Forbidden Alchemy or whatever. And then, and then just tie it all together in the middle. Snapcaster Mage, Snapcaster of Snapcaster course. Mage. Yes. And so, so now you're Snapcaster Mage, you're bringing back Mana Leaks, you're Doomblades, like Doomblades. Dissipates, yeah. So Snapcaster Mage um, is not as good here as it is in straight blue-black control. You aren't running as many instant spot removal things. You're running uh, seven counter spells instead of eight. But it's still, it's still very, very good. It's still one of the best creatures in standard. And um, being able to, yeah, I mean, he's just very versatile. He's an extra counter spell against the ramp decks. He's an extra removal spell against and, the beatdown decks. And he also gets in there and against also, aggro decks to oh, yeah. trade. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. He beats down Planeswalkers every now and again, you know? Sure. So uh, let, let's talk about the lands. We have the, the, the old standby, the Glacial Fortress, the Sea Chrome Coast, uh, four islands, four plains, one swamp. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you're getting your black off of six... Uh, Dual lands, essentially. Yeah, yeah, or yeah. So I've got eight lands. black sources, the one swamp and the, yeah. the five uh, M12 duels and the two skies duels. Um, basically, you need white more early, earlier and more often. Um, yeah, black's, black's obviously just kind of a splash for this deck. Right. Sometimes you can't cast Doomblade, but most of the time you can. Well, tell me about um, Ghost Quarter. How, how good is this card right now? It's not amazing, but the deck can afford to play a few colorless sources. And it can be very important. So, for example, against the white blue human decks, more land haunt can be an issue. It sure. stays in play for a lot of turns and you don't draw an Elish or something. Token um, town, you want to get the Gavoni town Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, sometimes you can just kill all the creatures. Like, that works too. <laughs> <laughs> get it one uh, way or the other. All right, well, I mean, you have a, you have a fourth, ten, fourth goose quarter in your sideboard. That's right. A negate. Three surgical extractions. So these five are the board against control. Okay. You want to board so, in there. So more than any, this represents more than... This is like an extra mana source against control? Exactly. Or? It's a 28th land, more than anything else. And obviously when you're born in the 28th land, you want to be one that does something. Because sure. your colors are already pretty good. And you can get into Folly Drown Yard with it in a control matchup. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Drown Yard is very, very big in control and control matchups. And I'm going to assume them. this is for also for the control matchups, right? <laughs> <laughs> Beat down the Lilianas all day long. Assuming they play the Snapcaster Mage. <laughs> um, timely reinforcements, of course. It's, it's just amazing against red. Like, the problem with the main deck, the problem with not having a lot of early spot removal is that you just, game one against red is really, really tough. They play a strong poke novel and you're like, oh, I don't have a Doomblade. If you haven't drawn Doomblade, then just like does your 10 or something. Um, so timely reinforcements, having all four on the board means that games two and three against red go a lot, a lot better. Um, still, the matchup's still probably not in your favor. I'd say mono red is your worst matchup, but these go a long, long, long way to helping that. And they're also good against Stalver, they're also good against White Blue Humans, they're good against Tempered Steel. Yeah, reinforcements is big. Fourth Wrath of God. Fourth Wrath of God, of course, obviously against the AKA Day of Judgment. Creatures. Sorry, Brand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Phantasmal Image, what, what is that coming in against? That's coming in against mostly the green decks, so especially Ramp. Uh, copying Primeval Titan for two mana is just insane. Uh, copying a Thron is very important, being able to pay two mana to kill a Thron. And uh, 
just eating coffee in a Verdiana. It's, it's just like the blue good. blade against. It's it's against so good. Yeah. It's like yeah, yeah, and it's coffee is solemn as well. That's fun stuff. Finally, two ratchet bombs. Ratchet bombs also sort of in this category. So this is your control sideboard. This is your aggro sideboard. This is your ramp sideboard. Although you also sideboard like this as well against ramp. Um, yeah. So ratchet bomb. Uh, it's uh, it's kind of like Oblivion Ring, I guess. It's not really amazing against anything, but it does. It's always versatile. It's always going to do something good. Sure. It's always against. You know, sometimes it stops a shrine of loyal allegiance. Sometimes you just blow it up and kill a one drop, and hopefully it stops them from playing another one drop that turn. Um, sometimes you kill a lot of spirits. It, it does a lot of stuff. Sure. So now you, you've had you've had a, a heck of a year on the Pro Tour, kind of quietly. Your your top eight came last season. That's right. But this season you have two Pro Tour top sixteens. That's right. Yeah. So that's uh, that's pretty amazing. Uh, you've got a Grand Prix win. That's right. uh, what, what, what did you uh, What did you come to Worlds? What's your What's your goal? I mean, aside from well, winning Worlds. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but I mean, what, 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 what was your What was your um, You're a Magic player. You've got a realistic, pragmatic goal. What, oh what yeah. Was well, it? Abs what I really want to do is get five pro points because then that gives me a hundred pro points lifetime, and there's going to be no more pro points after this year. So it has to be a top fifty. Okay. Um, allowing no compromise in top fifty, and obviously, you know, winning would be great. Uh, Winning the coming second gives me level eight for next year. Um, top eight gives me level seven. So yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, there you have it for Jeremy Neiman. This is Brian David Marshall signing off from the tournament center.